Coming up on Tech Thing, 120 volts on a stick. It's the Romeo Saber, Lenovo's latest Legion gaming laptop. Our annual list of cool things to see in San Francisco. And yes, mini maker fairs rock and they roll too. It's all coming up on Tech Thing. A big shout out to our patrons, Cletus, Sila, Henry L, and Christopher Z. Do us a favor, join the crew that makes Tech Thing possible at patreon.com slash tech thing. Without your support, we can't make the show. Patreon dot com slash tech thing. I'm Shannon Morse. And I'm Patrick Norton. And this is Tech Thing, where we have something useful in every single show. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have the most useful opportunity for you to carry power in your pack. <laughs> Actually, this is kind of weird. It is kind of weird. Um, it's Look. It's 2.2 pounds, it's $300, and it literally, I kid you not, is a 120 volt socket on a stick. Yep. It sure is. <laughs> so this is the Saber by Romeo. It comes in a different, a couple of different colors. There's black and blue, and it can charge pretty much everything, including your laptop. Oh. And yes, that is because it has that universal AC outlet. It's got like, so cool. it's like US, it's basically, one, it's an international outlet. <laughs> yes, international universal outlet. It also features a USB-C port, and that's five yes. volts by three amps by 15 watts and a two USB ports. One of those is 15 volts, 2.5 amps, 12.5 <laughs> watts. And the other one is five volts, one amp, five watts. And then that universal AC adapter, which is located on the other side, has <laughs> it can supply 120 volts, 60 hertz, and 90 watts. Now its charging capability equals about 86 watt hours of battery, which equates to 24,000 milliamp per hour. And that means that you can bring this on a plane since the limit is 100 watt hours. Hmm. And since it looks so nice and quality, I'm pretty sure you won't have any problems with TSA trying to take this on board. Now you can fully charge it with the included DC adapter that comes in the box in two hours. Really? So it, it charges very, very, very quickly. Nice. <laughs> with that included DC uh, input. Now, according to Romeo, it charges phones up to 10 times, tablets up to four times, laptops up to twice, DSLRs up to eight times, but that all depends on your device's battery size, honestly. So I would take that with a grain of salt and actually test it. The other thing is when you charge the lithium ion batteries, like the last 10% from like 90 to 100% takes the most electricity to sort of get it over that final hump. Yep. So you can significantly reduce the number of recharges you get from your external battery if you insist on charging to 100%. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> how did your laptop do? Um, I was actually pretty surprised by how well it did. I successfully charged my laptop off of it once by pressing down on the power button twice to turn on the AC outlet because for some reason it's not on by default, maybe for safety. That would be my guess, but my razor blade has a 70 watt hour battery. So the Saber's 86 watt hour battery got it to 100% with no issues. However, if I tried to charge it another time, it, I'm not gonna get it to 100% again, just because right. the capacity is not available for me. But it went one time, no issues at all. It would have to be like four pounds. Yeah, <laughs> it would. Uh, the AC outlet powers anything up to 90 watts, okay. which is great, and it is also draw and shock proof. However, there is no official IP rating on it. So basically, you're not going to run your hair dryer off of it. No. You're not going to run your blender off of it, <laughs> but a lot of other devices should run just yeah, fine. Yeah, electronics, no hmm. issue. And it also operates between 32 to 104 Fahrenheit, which means that if you were in LA last week and you had those 115 degree weathers, you probably would not want to try running this outside in the sunlight unless you had the AC on inside your house. And then you could run this inside, no problem. <laughs> now, it includes nice features like overheating protection, short circuit, overcurrent, overvoltage voltage protection, reverse voltage protection, and overcharge discharge protection, which I appreciate very much. I thought you know, most of those would be standard features, but you actually had a reverse charging incident. I did. I was trying to power my Nintendo Switch off of an Anchor battery of all of all companies, and uh -huh. it started, the, the Switch started uh -huh. charging the battery. Weird. Yeah, and I was just, I was not too excited about this, so <laughs> maybe this should replace it. Uh, lastly, it does include blue Bluetooth to connect to a mobile app. The mobile app just simply tells you how much battery is left and if your devices plugged into it are still charging or if they are indeed finished. So you can look and see how much charging time is left. In case the little dots on the side for the LED charging level are not accurate enough for you? Yeah. It, I mean, it also tells you how much time is left in the Saber battery before it runs empty, but the app lost Bluetooth connection multiple times, and I did not find it very useful since the LEDs on the device itself, those give you quarter increments to tell you if 
if you're at 25, 50, 75, or 100 percent battery life, and then it starts blinking if you're super, super low to the point where you're at five percent battery left in this thing. So. I, I had no reason to use the mobile application at all. I still tested it to see if it would work, and it kept on losing connection. So I was just like, uh, nah. It's okay to not spend money developing an app that most people won't really care yeah. about. Maybe it takes firmware updates. Yes, Maybe that's it, the real it, did, the app. it did do an update, actually. I'm glad you mentioned that. It did do an update. I was kidding. It, why? We don't need an update either. It Apparently, also, it needed an update. No, it doesn't. It's a battery. <laughs> it's a very sophisticated battery uh, with an outlet. It, so <laughs> the app also requires you to sign up for an account, which I was not super excited about from my security standpoint. Mm -hmm. I just don't like signing up for accounts if I don't need to. So here's the thing. It is a $300 battery. It is really, really expensive. But I do really appreciate the AC port charging capabilities and the really fast recharging. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. Like. This could be very useful if you're waiting on a flight at the airport and there's like only one You've already charged outlet. your laptop so once. You, yeah, you're, <laughs> you've only charged your uh, laptop once, but you have two hours at the airport, you can charge this thing and then be good to go for the rest of your trip. So it's a battery. Yep. It's an inverter. Yep. It has a terrible Bluetooth application that yes. you hated, <laughs> but it recharges really fast. Yes, absolutely. Not enough power on it to USB-C charge laptops, but more than enough power for any USB tablet, USB C tablet. Yeah, or phone. tablet, phone. Um, most of your smaller handheld devices, mm -hmm. it would have no problems charging. It could charge my Nintendo Switch, no problem. So overall, I was very happy with it. I would just, I could do without the Bluetooth and the app, which would probably save a little bit of money with like labor costs or manufacturing. I would love to see it have two 2.5 amp USB ports mm -hmm. instead of just the one and then the, the, the smaller one. Otherwise, it's excellent. It's durable. Mm -hmm. It's a quality product. And I don't think it would trigger the TSA looking at it closely. Okay, I gotta ask, because we pre-recorded this episode. You're at the beach right now. Yeah. Is the Saber going to the beach with you? You know, I gotta be honest, like every year that I go visit my family and do the little beach vacation, I try to leave my electronics at home and spend time, like quality time with my family. So it probably won't come with me just for the mere fact that I won't have my laptop with me, at least I don't plan to. If I was going to a convention or going overseas mm -hmm. on a longer vacation, then yeah, I would absolutely bring this with me so that I had that portable power. It can't power a blender. Nope. It's not going to the beach. And we are making margaritas, so that's very important. <laughs> <laughs> we got a message from Tails the Fox, who emailed ask at techthing.com. Jazz Jackrabbit, that's Fox for hello. How are you and keep it coming? Any way to buy Mac OS X USB keys? Since I lost Mac OS X installing Windows 10 under boot camp, and the only way I can make the Mac work was to make it 100% Windows 10. Thanks from Tails. Oh my goodness. So. Uh -oh. I would run recovery mode, and if you've never used recovery mode on Mac OS X or on a Macintosh laptop, um, it's pretty awesome actually. You hit uh, Command plus R until you see the Apple logo and a spinning globe, and then finally when this thing comes up, you will know you're in recovery mode, basically when you see the menu up there, and you can actually reinstall a new copy of Mac OS. Wow, that's cool. Uh, yeah, and my understanding is you can still, should be able, it should be able to download a fresh copy of the OS from Apple servers cool. over the interwebs. That's good. Or I'm hallucinating, uh, and I don't remember the last time I did it. <laughs> there are third-party providers of OS X USB keys, um, but they are not legit. Well, they may be legit, but Apple only sells uh, older DVDs or allows you to download it. Um, you might have a great time buying one of those uh, OS X install uh, USB keys, or you might get hosed. When it comes to an operating system, I would highly recommend going to the provider. Yeah. Because you never know what somebody's added to that USB thumb drive. Yeah. They just sold their making you pay so they can root your system. It just, it bothers me. <laughs> um, if you have access to a second Macintosh, it's easy to make a bootable thumb drive to install OS X, and of course, all the information for that is up on support.apple.com. Oh, cool. Good luck, Tails. We love your questions, your tips, and your suggestions of products to check out. Your ideas, there are so many of them, and they are so awesome. Please tweet at TechThing, at Snubs, or at Patrick Dorton, or just email. Askatechthing.com is the place to send your thoughts out to. Big shout out to our patrons, patreon.com slash techthing. You pay the bills, you make the show possible. Our thanks to you. Join the crew that makes Tech Thing happen at patreon.com slash techthing. This right here is the Lenovo Legion Y530. Oh! oh. 
Whoa, that was almost in harmony. Almost. Almost. <laughs> it's an entry level gaming laptop and it costs $749.99 and up. I am reviewing the $929.99 option. So it's $930. <laughs> and it features an 8th gen Intel H CPU, NVIDIA GTX 1050 graphics, and a 15.6 inch IPS anti glare display with a teeny tiny bezel. Let me guess 1080p. Yep, 1080p. You knew it. <laughs> oh, what's a 1050? <laughs> it's got better thermals, backlit keyboard, and it also has a new look compared to their previous models. So it is a lot sleeker mm -hmm. than typical gaming laptops that you see. So you could hypothetically bring this with you when you are adulting. <laughs> I am very impressed by the look and the feel of this. I really like this look and feel, even though it is ABS plastic, so it's not CNC aluminum like pricier laptops. It still feels really, really nice to me. There's the touch. nothing wrong with ABS plastic. I also no, there's not. There's one thing I just want to point out because I love it so much. Um, by offsetting the screen, yep. it will probably fit on the lunch tray in an airplane <gasps> a lot better. That's a good it's point. It's still going to be tight, but it's not going to be as difficult as if it was all the way back. That's a great point. I have no issues with the plastic in this machine. Yeah, I don't either. And that's the thing. Like, it, it feels really nice. It feels really sturdy. It feels like it's a quality machine. The screen does not have a lot of give to it. So whenever you open it, it mm -hmm. stays in place wherever you want to put it. And the latch allows Always it good. to fold all the way back. Is it that cool? <laughs> of course, if you push it all the way down to the ground. You might hurt it because there's a little bit of a ledge there. Are you one of the people who holds it? Because I do this with my kids where I hold up the laptop like this. Uh -huh. I do that okay. whenever I'm like showing somebody something. Like if I'm showing my husband something at home, I'm like, look, look at the thing. It's a Sailor Moon hoodie that was made in Sri Lanka in 1978. It's yeah, priceless. Basically. <laughs> it does not take up a lot of space either. It's 25 millimeters thin. Although it is slightly heavier than what I'm used to, it's 5.1 pounds. Uh, that is lighter though than the Acer that I recently reviewed. Nice. The display on here is a 15.6 inch full HD 1920 by 1080 IPS display. It has optional NVIDIA G-Sync technology with 144 hertz refresh rates. However, on the website, those are coming soon. <sighs> Uh, the one that I am reviewing, it has the NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti, 4 gigs of GPU, and it does very decent rates in Destiny 2 mm -hmm. with a steady, steady 60 FPS, so it doesn't drop during action-packed moments in the game. 1050 Ti, awesome entry-level gaming card. Very. Did they say how much it would cost to get the G-Sync technology in the laptop? Nope. I don't know yet. Rats. I know. I want to know. The brightness left lots to be desired as it seemed really? slightly dimmer compared to my pricier machines. Although there's a thousand dollar difference there. <laughs> so keep that in mind. The webcam is at the bottom middle. Sorry, Patrick. Nostril but we cam. do get those really nice bezels though. It's like so thin. So that's really nice. Honestly, like I think I'm going to take the bezels over the webcam because I always use my Logitech webcam instead. Sorry, dude. I just, if they're going <laughs> to bother to put a webcam in, I just don't want it down there. Yeah, I understand. It's a thing. <laughs> uh, the specs on the inside include an Intel Core i5-8300H 2.3 gigahertz processor, 8 gigs of RAM. However, you can upgrade for mm -hmm. more money to 16 gigs of RAM. Windows 10, it also has 128 gigs solid state drive PCIe, and there is a 1 terabyte 5400 RPM hard disk drive too. Which is where you're going to want to put your games. <laughs> yep. I made that mistake with Destiny, but at least Destiny runs really quick on my teeny tiny SSD. So that's cool. <laughs> Bluetooth 4.1 and Wi-Fi are also included in here, and there's a 52.5 watt hour battery. And that battery lasted me about five hours, no problem, including with gaming, which is less than I was hoping for, but met my requirements when I was testing this out. So I was I was okay with it. Uh, these specs plus the GPU allowed it to hit a Time Spy score of 2501, and that is slightly better than the similarly priced Acer Nitro 5 that I recently reviewed as well. Was this a faster processor or around the same sort of processor as the Nitro? Uh, same processor. This GPU is a little bit better than the TI Acer. versus a 10 regular 1050. Got yeah, it. exactly. Now most ports are on the back, except for the USB 3.1 Type A on both sides. So there's one on both sides, and there's also a headphone mm -hmm. jack on the side too. 
too, which makes it very easy to plug in your headphones when you're gaming. On the back, you have a Kensington lock. There's power for the laptop, obviously. There's full Ethernet, RJ45, yes. full HDMI 2.0, so it's 2.0, keep that in mind. Another USB 3.1 Type A, mini display port 1.4, and also a USB C. So thank you for including the USB C. It also has Harman speakers. They're located on the sides and the front, kind of on the bottom. And those feature Dolby Audio Premium. It gets really, really loud. Does it still sound good when no, it's really? No, okay. I would say it sounds best at 25 to 50% volume. After that, it gets somewhat distorted. And it also kind of hurt my ears if it got too loud. And it was it was very loud when I was listening to like YouTube videos. I was like, oh, that's too much for me. 50%, keep it right there. The keyboard, it is backlit, but it's only backlit in white. So there is no RGB on this. And the keys have a 1.7 millimeter travel and oh, nice. 63 grams of force is required to actually make them go down and do something. Although it is kind of spongy. If you want to test it out, you totally can. Here you go, Patrick. See what you think of the, the spongy That's keyboard. a lot of travel for a laptop. It is keyboard. a lot of travel. It's more than my blade. You know why it feels spongy? Because you're not slamming against the back of the keyboard like you are yeah. with most laptops. Yeah. And it doesn't have a lot of give to it either with the, I'm okay the with keyboard. That. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. Although it is a bit spongy, I did not mind losing uh, some of that tactile feedback, especially because they have included the number pad on the side, which I truly, truly, really enjoy. The touchpad is smaller than my usual, and it is also shifted under the space bar, so it's centered compared to a regular keyboard on a laptop. This is awesome. Shifted. Yes. This is awesome because most places they put the they put keypad right in the center, mm -hmm. which makes it impossible to type and use the keypad. Exactly. Not that, that makes me um, angry. Also, <laughs> I noticed that the touchpad is very responsive. It's easier to use than I'm used to for mm -hmm. a lot of uh, budget laptops with the under 1000 price point. Also, it was really easy for me to get my FPS on even with this touchpad. So I was very impressed with that. Would that be frames per second or first person shooter? First person okay. shooter. <laughs> Destiny 2. Is it loud? Um, um, not really. Yeah, when it comes oh, to wow. the fans, it's pretty quiet. They have this new thermal optimization under the hood, big rear vents that keep everything relatively cool, and they also have a really nice big grill on the bottom, so both of those fans can blow everything out, which is very, very nice. So when I was playing Destiny 2, I didn't feel like I was going to like burn my legs off, even though I did notice some heat on the bottom, but it wasn't necessarily to the point where it felt dangerous or anything it wasn't like that. traumatizing no not at all <laughs> uh, if you're wondering about upgrading which I know you are because I always like to take the bottoms off of here you can access the m.2 slot on the bottom but the RAM is going to be a little bit more troublesome it's pretty hard to get to the RAM on basically there. have to pull half the machine apart to get to yeah, the RAM. yeah yeah exactly which you you can do but be careful be very very careful if nothing else at least they give you the option because so many models when you get to the basic entry level yeah. are everything soldered down to the motherboard yeah exactly you, I'm, I'm sensing I, enthusiasm yeah, for this. Yeah, I really liked it. I love like what it looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, this is a very well-made, inexpensive machine that's priced in at under a grand for good gaming specs. No, they're not top of the line, obviously, but that's this is... That's why it's is, 930 bucks and it's, not 18 yes. or 2200 bucks. Yes, it is an absolute, absolute contender in that market. It would be a great choice for a professional looking for a gaming machine or something that can do some heavier processing. Video editing. It also would be awesome for back to school, too. So, like, if you got kids going back in August or September, I mean, this is a really nice machine. Like, college kids? I, I, Possibly. Yeah. It depends on how well they take care of their things. True. And Although if you'll this have one to feels, do tech support. This one is not like, you know, this is staying at this at the place that I leave it at and it doesn't feel like it's gonna break, which is really nice. It feels really nice and durable. I'm just thinking in terms of, of having to do remote tech support. I yeah. I'm projecting. I get that, I get that. <laughs> if you want to get your kid a gaming laptop, though, this seems like a very thoughtfully engineered one. Absolutely, yeah. I was very, very impressed with it. I think Lenovo did a really excellent job with it, and I I, I just love what it looks like. You keep touching it. I know. You're I just, petting it. Well, it's got this cool, it's got a cool design to it. I like it. Let me know what you think, and if there's other budget laptops under $1,000 that you would like me to check out on the show, I would love to check them out for you. Ask at techthing.com or at snubs on Twitter. You can also tweet at TechThing. I'll check those as well. 
I got to ask, there's a $750 model, an yes. $830 model. Yes. You looked at the $930 model. Yes. What's the difference between the $750 model and like the $930 model? What, what, um, what's the jumps? A, that's a good question. Well, the, the CPU is the same. It's same OS, same display and everything like that. The memory is also the same. The big differences are the hard drive in the 750 model is a one terabyte hard disk drive. And then on the one that I reviewed, it's a 128 gig solid state plus a one mm -hmm. terabyte hard disk drive. And then you also get the change in the GPU. So you go okay. from a 1050 to a 1050 Ti. It's funny, they have the $830 model where they drop the one terabyte hard yeah. drive, but they add a 256 gigabyte SSD. Yep. And then you get a 1050, but not a 1050 Ti. Exactly. Nice. <laughs> so lots of options there. So it's pretty cool. It's always fun to see. But they're all they're all Core i fives until you get to the top of the line model. Yes, and that one what is a little over a thousand dollars for a Core i seven. Yep. And sixteen gigabytes of RAM. And sixteen gigs of gigabytes of RAM. So much RAM. Gigs of bytes. Gigs of bytes. <laughs> I would like thirty two gigs of bytes in my next laptop. <laughs> I don't need it, but I want it. Well, well moving on. Sorry, I'm thinking about video editing. Now. <laughs> we got a tweet. <laughs> <laughs> and this tweet is from Chad Armstrong. So Chad said, at snubs at Patrick Norton, I'm visiting San Francisco for the first time from Texas this July, and he must see spots that I have to go enjoy. So many. Yes, so many. So uh, he's mostly going to be using Uber and public transportation. He's yeah. staying down by this, ladies and gentlemen, AT&T Park. Oh, what a great place. I could care less if the Giants lose all season. Sorry, because i got some friends that are big Giants fans, but deal with it. <laughs> I live in the East Bay. Uh, but that is a fantastic stadium to watch baseball. Yeah, it's so um, much fun. It is a beautiful place to watch baseball. The farmer's market takes place every Saturday morning. Uh, Ferry Building, uh, which is about a mile from where you're staying, get there early. Seven or eight in the morning is best before the crowds eat all the things. Yes. By 10 in the morning, it is over overwhelmed with uh, hungover 20-somethings <laughs> and people pushing around carts. But oh, if you get no. there early, no, it's, uh, you get the full California Misto where the yeah. fog's still sitting on the bay oh, and cool. there's just a little bit of water traffic and you get to walk by um, the fireboats oh, nice. and then they have amazing food, the baked goods. Are incredible. That sounds awesome. I want to see that. Have you never been to the farmers market? I've in Ferry never Plaza? been to the farmers market. <gasps> I, I like to sleep in and <laughs> not go over the bay if I don't have to. That's perfectly reasonable. This is not bad. I mean, we used to go to it constantly. The Exploratorium, also down in the Embarcadero, uh, which is an incredible interactive science museum, and not just for kids. Oh, although it's they so much fun. They have an adults' night too, which is pretty amazing. Um, the California Academy of Sciences is one of the most extraordinary science museums in the world. Make sure if you go there to get all the way up on the roof to yes. see the living roof on top of it. So cool. Do the earthquake room and make sure you get in line for the big crazy bubble where you go from <laughs> the sort of, it's it's essentially like. It's a big greenhouse. It's a, Yeah, it's like a triple canopy jungle inside of a so giant cool. glass ball. Yeah, it's amazing. And There's uh, parrots. There's parrots. Um, Golden Gate Park is epic, mm -hmm. which is the big park on the west end of San Francisco. Uh, a lot of people, of course, love walking over the Golden Gate Bridge. And uh, Muir Woods, another classic. Basically, giant ass trees. <laughs> Old growth California redwoods, there are not as many of them as there should be. And Muir Woods has some really good hiking trails too. Just make sure to pay at the gate and then you can go wander <laughs> in the woods. And it's so, so much fun. Uh, one of my favorites though over in Golden Gate Park is called the Conservatory of Flowers, which I just visited for the first time a couple of months ago and I thought it was absolutely amazing. I was just checking out this Murder at the Conservatory, which looks like a really cool event that they're doing but they do some amazing lighting at mm -hmm. night which is gorgeous especially for events and it also has this incredible vast array of beautiful beautiful flowers that mm -hmm. you really can't find anywhere else and the other one that I really wanted to recommend was Ghirardelli Square I know it's super touristy but it is just so much fun and they have the absolute best Sundays Ever. They're huge. They will give you a sugar high and oh my goodness, they are so delicious. Not to mention some really, really pretty views and some really great spots for selfies and stuff like that. And you have to ride a cable car. It is so much fun. <laughs> yeah, they're really long lines if you take the cable car from one of the touristy districts. Go early. Go early. Yes, it is so much fun. It's like $7 now or mm -hmm. something like that. But 
it's totally worth it, especially if you like hang off the side. It's really cool. And take a selfie at the Yoda Fountain at Lucasfilms campus in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I've been there. You can totally go there from the public. Just tell the security guard at the front that you just want to take a picture with Yoda, and they will let you park real quick and take a photo, and then you got to leave. Do not try to walk inside. Nope, you are not allowed outside <laughs> as public, but you can totally take a picture right in front at the Yoda yeah. Fountain. It's so cool. Whale watching is really, 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 really cool, but uh, December through April, that's the peak for gray whale migrations. Um, this is the off season, so if you pay the money to spend the day out in the ocean, you will probably not see any whales, although there is a very slim chance you might see a humpback or blue whale. Um, but basically during December and April, the, the gray whale migrations are all over the place. Yet to do that, I really want to though. The, you know. I've it, never seen a whale, so. I want to do that. I got to have a gray whale pass by a sailboat I was on about 30 yards to starboard once. Whoa. It was one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. As we were desperately trying, it we turned and it started turning with us. We're like, no, 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 <laughs> get away. You're going to get us in trouble. And the whale's like, whatever. I'm a whale. Deal with it. You're trolling you. Uh, oh, my goodness. I was trolled by a whale. Uh, and dolphins, but that's a whole other story. Um, <laughs> Can't say that, family show. Um, Alcatraz, a lot of people love doing the Alcatraz tour. Uh, buy tickets for the Alcatraz tour now if yes. you're coming later this year because those sell out immediately uh, several days before. Uh, and the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art uh, has been through a huge expansive and they have a Rene Magritte exhibit running oh, cool. through October 28th if you are into the art thing. We should probably recommend to make sure to br bring something to cover up with, a hoodie, a, a fleece. fleece. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and sunscreen. Because even though it's summertime here, it's cold. When you go to Ghirardelli Square or to Pier 39 to get your tourist on, you will notice about half of the people there will be wearing the exact same, different <laughs> colors, but the exact same sort of, you know, same weird, hoodie. it's this embroidered San Francisco yep. fleece that everybody buys when they get here and realize it's not Los Angeles and it's like 54 degrees. Yeah. Um, so we get cold fog and winds here. Uh, and they alternate with some serious sunshine. So it's not unusual for us to have two days of 54 degree weather with fog and then two days of 85 degree weather. Yeah. Um, and it almost always gets cold and windy in the evenings, which yes. is great if you're a sailor. Not so cool if you're trying to lay down next to the ocean. <laughs> Very true. Just saying. <laughs> I hope you have super, super happy fun times because it's a really awesome city and mm -hmm. I'm very thankful and happy that I live here and I'm able to experience all those things. So if anybody else is coming <laughs> to visit, but not Definitely. before 10 a.m. No, not before 10 a.m. Because <laughs> I'm lazy. But if yeah. anybody else is visiting, let us know. If you uh, want recommendations, we would love to share them with you. A big thank you to Hack5 for the studio space. If you haven't, please check out the Security and Privacy Podcast at hack5.org. Then, ladies and gentlemen, just a click, and you will be in the midst of hack5.org slash gear, a source of superior pen testing and USB automation tools. And if you haven't seen one, kids, seriously, packet squirrels. Think Ethernet multi-tool that provides covert remote access, painless packet captures, and secure VPN connections with the flip of a switch. It just sits there doing stuff. It does. On the network. <laughs> and remember, <laughs> once in a while, put down your phone, step away from your screen, and close that laptop and do something analog, like attend a mini Maker Fair. Patrick, oh, my goodness. I didn't know this was happening. I didn't. We didn't know. My, uh, my wife found it happened in Alameda and they kept it really low key and they did sort of, uh, you could invite, you could basically apply for a ticket and they had free tickets for this one, which oh, was really, cool. really, it's like, it was super, super small. Um, mini Maker Fairs, if you take a look at, at the uh, makerfair.com slash map. Um, Whoa. So the flagships are the big ones and apparently the San Mateo one is no longer the flagship. The, or maybe it's just a flagship when it's still before it's happened. But um, <laughs> there's flagships, there's the big giant features ones, and then there's mini maker fairs. And mini maker fairs are super tiny. Like, look, here's one. And these are all the ones that are just happening later this year. This is Lehigh, Utah, oh, wow, Colorado Springs, so Wichita, Tyler, Shreveport. They aren't as big, they aren't as overwhelming, but there's still a ton of amazing making going on. So we had our first mini maker fair in Alameda a couple weeks ago, and I will remember it always <laughs> because it is the place where my six-year-old used his very first zip tie while assembling a project. Oh, that's so cute. It was. It was completely adorable. Um, the Artbots Toys crew, they do, uh, uh, they basically do curriculum and science projects. They had a pile of their spin bots for kids to build. Baby's first zip tie. <laughs> um, prop to the incredibly gracious Sandy Drobny. She was out teaching folks how to weave with plastic. So she actually cuts plastic bags into strips. And then she basically does like long spirals out of the plastic bags she collects. 
She was teaching folks how to weave with plastic and her art aprons were amazing and made almost entirely from recycled and upcycled material. Sail Drone was out with one of their autonomous sailing rigs. Quote, we provide high resolution ocean data collected by a global fleet of sailing drones. Um, the NOAA is a big client and they said they'd actually had one out, uh, like running out and back uh, on its own for like a 10 month trip, like way down wow, into the Southern Pacific and back up uh, to uh, the bay. The wing sail tech was actually, because they do hard big wing sails on those. Yeah. Um, they actually pioneered the technology that goes into that, chasing sailing land speed records, probably over in the same kind of places where they do Burning Man. Wow. Speaking of sails, Pineapple Sails, which is one Pineapple of our local- Pineapple Sails? One of our local sail makers. There are no pen testing involved there. Oh. Um, they had little tiny sail kits they brought to, uh, show kids how the, like modern sails are assembled yeah. and also uh, why they aren't flat. Oh. Yeah, a proper sail functions like a wing, long story. I won't put you all to sleep telling you about it. Um, <laughs> there are a lot of bone shakers, like the big bicycles with the big wheel on the front, the little wheel on the back. Uh, oh yeah. Routinely, out, like at least once a month, I see somebody, and not the same somebody, riding one of those <laughs> in Alameda, um, which is way more than I would expect, which mm -hmm. makes sense actually, because I did not know the rideable bicycle replicas, aka highwheel.com, is headquartered a couple wheels from my house. And wow. the, the builds on these, some of them were absolutely gorgeous. Um, there was a cupcake car build, and if you want to learn oh, more about cupcake cars, muffineering.com, we got a link in the show notes. Concrete Works uh, is a really cool company that moved into. Uh, one of the last places doing sort of light industry on the island. Um, they were out showing off their lightweight polymer concrete creations, which includes some really, really cool tiles. And actually what you're looking at right now is an amazing, um, what do you call the seats in a diner? Oh, But more sophisticated booths, like booths yeah. Uh, and I gotta say they were incredibly tolerant of all the children that were bouncing off of their artificial rocks. Oh. <laughs> I love saying artificial rocks, it makes me happy. <laughs> Life-size operation was a hit, and I do believe some folks from the Pacific Pinball Museum were there. Yes. There are tons of mini maker fairs out there. Go find one by you and check it out. Literally, these are the ones that are going through uh, the rest of the year. So that's a lot. That's a lot. And by the way, if you're not in the United States, that's okay. Oh, like, there's one in Japan. Japan and China and Canada. Canada, don't get angry with me. <laughs> Bio mini maker wow. fair in They're Mexico. They're all over the place. They're that's so the place. cool. There are makers everywhere. I love it. That's amazing. It's a great community too. Yeah. <laughs> They're generally really freaking awesome people. Yeah. I'm Barry Norton. I'm Shannon Morse. We'll see you next week on Tech Bay. You should do a life size. Snubs? I was actually going to say uh, a sort of a life size Sailor Moon. Oh, that'd be dope. <laughs> I could make a life size Gundam. That would be awesome. Would be awesome. Although there is already one in Japan. So no, maybe so it wants to be two. New. But doing like doing like a life size, I don't know, Sailor Moon. I could make a giant replica of her moon stick. There the one that it. she attacks monsters with. Except it'll be like human size. I gotta say, I haven't watched as much Sailor Moon as you have. It's true. <laughs> Fire. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I didn't have cable until I was like 17 years old because oh, yeah. there was no cable where I lived. Yeah. And before that, there actually was one cable channel. It was called HBO. It was broadcast to a satellite on the roof of the apartment building.